salt it. Ah, that's a good sound. Ah, we got some flamage now. Alright, go for me again. Go always oh, shove that baby. That's it. Alright. What really turned me on to uh, uh, soda firing and what really made me want to make this kiln is I, I took a class up at Pottery Northwest in Seattle. And that's a studio up there that offers soda firing classes. Well, I took, took a bunch of classes up there and, and uh, made some pots and fired the kilns with a bunch of people I didn't know. And I said, why can't PLU have something like this? You know? The kiln itself is on cinder blocks right down here. These cinder blocks, if you, you know, take them away, there's probably about 20 to 25 of them. They look like this right here. Ugh. Really heavy things. We actually got this stuff from an inside kiln that's been used that actually Steve made when he was being a student here. And we took all the materials from the inside kiln and pretty much placed it out here. Now it's, I had to rebuild it from the ground up with a, the mindset that it's going to be a, um, a soda kiln rather than just a kiln. It was literally from ground up, so you started with those cinder blocks. A layer of soft brick, which is sort of like an insulating brick, helps keep the heat inside. And then the floor of the kiln, the whole inside of the kiln, these really hard bricks, so it, the soda doesn't eat away at the whole thing. And on the outside, the whole shell is soft brick. Now the arch is a whole different story. You can't just put up an arch real, real quick. So we have this form that we use. We made a wooden form stuck it in there, started building bricks around it, built holes for the burner ports for all the gas burners. It takes a lot longer than you think. I thought it was gonna be done around December. It took me until probably about, let's see, January I went and studied abroad, February, March, mid-April I was done and I was firing the kiln. With this kiln, you put your pot in the kiln, naked, no glaze on it other than the inside. And you actually, at peak temperatures, about 2300 degrees, 2350, you start introducing soda. So now soda is like baking soda, right? Soda ash, glaze pretty much. And you put it in these little burner ports right down here and the uh, glaze volatizes and actually follows the path of the flame. And so your pot's sitting right up here, right next to the burner port, you know, on the shelf and all this soda is coming in and just covering it, coating it. And so one side of the pot right here will be covered in all this like glassy, glassy formulation right here. Then the rest of it will be a little bit more orange and not as covered. But it's a beautiful effect. The downside of it is that it eats brick. The glaze goes everywhere. It not only goes on your pots, but it goes all over the bricks. And that's why we got really hard brick right here soaks up a lot of the heat. Um, you know, a normal kiln would be able to fire in seven, seven to eight hours if it was uh, really efficient. Now this one fires in about 13, 14 hours. It's got this hard brick. It just soaks up all the heat. So you got to heat the brick up and then you got to let it cool. It takes about four days for the whole process to get, to get done. You got to load the kiln. Um, you got to fire the kiln. Then you got to wait for it to cool off. Of course, waiting is the hardest part, right? Because you've got all your stuff in there. It's a messy, messy process. But your pots are beautiful.